All right, looking at our do now, uh, we've got a couple of problems where we're being asked to write the expression, and then we're going to be finding the value. So it tells us a t-shirt costs X dollars. The shirt is on sale for 20% off, and we want to write three different uh, expressions that represent the final cost of the t-shirt. So looking at this, we can start with the expression. We start with X dollars, and then it's a discount, so we're going to be subtracting 20% of the original amount, so that's 0.2 times x. Uh, if we factor that out, that's going to give us x times 1 minus 0.2, which is x times 0.8. And again, that makes so much sense to us, or we could also write this as 0.8x, um, because when we look at this now, we're talking about the 80% of the price that's remaining, um, so that's 80% of x. So looking at this, what is the final cost of the t shirt's original? If the shirt original price was $20, so that's x.8 times x, or 0.8 times 20, is going to give us $16. Alright, so looking over here, it says a company pays x dollars for a t-shirt, and then marks up the price 20%. So originally we're looking at x dollars, that's how much they pay for it originally. And then they're adding 20% point two of the price. Um, again we factor this out this gives me one plus point two and that's x times one point two or we could say it's one point two x. So looking at this um, it tells us originally they paid twenty dollars for it so that's x twenty times one point two and when we do that multiplication we're going to get twenty four dollars. All right, so uh, let's look over at our aim for today. All right, so what I want us to consider here um, as we write our aim today is that we're going to write if-then justifications for equivalent events. Write if-then justifications for equivalent events. Okay, so we have two players here. Um, they both have these sets of cards. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and figure out their current scores. Uh, go ahead and pause the video real quick and figure that out. Alright, as a quick look at this, we have negative 2 plus 2 plus negative 1. And when we think about that, these actually add up to 0. So 0 plus negative 1. Player 1 has negative 1. Uh, player 2, negative 3 plus 0 plus 2. Again, the plus 0 really doesn't mean anything to us, so negative 3 plus 2 also gives us negative 1. So thinking through this, first thing we recognize about these two player cards is right now they're on equal footing. All right, if both players receive a negative 2 card, so we're thinking about what happens, this is kind of where our aim comes in, equivalent events. The same thing is happening to both um, players. Um, add a negative 2. Um, to their hand. So um, thinking about this in terms of our expression, we're adding a negative 2 and we're adding a negative 2. Go ahead and tell me what their new value is going to be. After that, they both receive a 1 card. So go ahead and um, add that to their set and tell me what that value will be after that. So we're looking at this. Look at these two values. Once you've got those two values, Go ahead and start thinking about, hmm, what can I do here? What does this mean? All right, so pause the video um, until you've done that and get that all sorted out. So you should recognize that we get negative 3 um, for both of them, and then we also get negative 2 for both of them. So thinking through what conclusions we should be able to draw, I want you to guide yourself and listen through and make sure you're answering these questions as I ask them to you. Okay, um, were your scores the same in the beginning? We look back and hopefully in your brain you're like, yes, absolutely, negative one and negative one. Um, did we add the same amount to both sides? Well, as we showed up here in our expression, we added negative two and then certainly after that you, you added positive one. Um, was your values still the same for player one and player two after the additions were done? Yes, of course, we look here and we see that um, we're both here at negative two. So why did those values remain the same? 
and think through that yourself because that's the really important question here. Why were those values still the same after we added the new cards? Well, if you think about it, um, we had equivalent expressions to begin with and we did equivalent things to them. So that would make sense to us that if we do the same thing to two things that are already equal, um, then the values are going to remain the same. So we can write this as an if-then conclusion or if-then justification for our work by saying if the original sums are equal, Then, so this is where that if-then statement comes in, if something happens, then anything added to both will keep them equal. So just thinking about that, um, another way we could have said this, if the original sums are equal and we add the same thing to both of them, they will remain, then they will remain equal. Okay. So two different ways to think about it. All right. So going back to their original hands, um, what would happen to, what would their new scores be if they discarded a two? In other words, if they took these twos out of their hands. And so remember, um, when we're thinking about that, that's thinking about subtraction. Um, but realistically, uh, we see that if we take away the twos, then we can really just think about it as adding negative two plus negative one and negative three plus zero. So hopefully we identify here that it's negative three and negative three. So write the numerical expressions that represent their hand and the change. So what I'm asking you to do here is think about the original addition was negative two plus 2, plus negative 1, and then we subtract it away, the positive 2. Same thing here, we have negative 3, plus 0, plus 2, and then we subtract it away, the 2. And what we can see here is thinking through this again, asking yourselves this string of questions and answering them kind of as we go along here. Um, did they originally have the same value of the cards? Well, yes, as we go all the way back, we do say that they have the same cards. Did we have the exact same cards remaining after we took away the two? No, but how did the values compare? You should be thinking to yourself, well, they were still equal. Um, so what we can think here is like we can draw a conclusion from this is once again, we did the same thing to both sides. And this time we subtracted, so we can write the if-then statement is if the expressions start equal, and the same thing is subtracted, so we in this case subtracted 2 from both of them, then they will stay equal. Okay, sliding on over. We have two players um, in the ninja card game. Uh, this one looks a little bit different. So looking at this, uh, we can see the players have 2, 3, and negative 1, and 2, 1, and 1. Um, go ahead and find their current scores, and then go ahead and answer this question. What would their new scores be if they tripled their cards? All right, go ahead and do that. Pause the video if you need to before I go ahead and start for you.
All right, so looking through this, uh, we have 2 plus 3 plus negative 1, that should give us 4. And 2 plus 1 plus 1, that should also give us 4. What would happen if they were tripled? Um, so coming down here to the expressions, thinking about it this way, this would be 2 plus 3 plus negative 1 plus another 2 plus 3 plus negative 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus negative 1. And that's a really long way to write that out. If we think about that, this is really just repeated addition for tripling this of this. So what is a different way that we could write this expression? It's the repeated multiplication of this or sorry, repeated addition. So we know this is three sets, or three times two plus three plus negative one. So um, thinking about that, that's a different way we could have written this. Um, their new scores here are 12 and 12. Go ahead and write for me um, the two equivalent expressions that you could be using um, for player two um, as he triples his cards. So hopefully you've written here 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. So again, we see the three different sets here of 2 plus 1 plus 1, which we could rewrite as 3 times 2 plus 1 plus 1. So again, we see we should see a similar conclusion here that I think that maybe you should be able to write on your own. Um, so go ahead and write an if-then statement um, thinking about the conclusion of what happened here um, when we started with these equivalent values we multiplied both by 3. Okay, so hopefully you've written down here, if two expressions are equal, and both are multiplied by the same value comma then they will remain equal all right uno mas un mas all right going back to their original hands um so we already know that this is four and four, what would happen if we divided their scores by two? So if we divide it by two, four divided by two would be two, and four divided by two would be two. Write a numerical expression that represents the change in their hand. So we have um, two plus three plus negative one, this whole thing, divided by two. Now two plus zero plus two, also divided by two. All right, so once again, we see a similar thing happening here. I think that you're talented enough mathematicians. You can go ahead and write your conclusions about um, what happens if we do this. So if expressions are equal, and divided by the same value, then 
then, comma, then, they will remain equal. All right, so before we move on, let's think about kind of the sum or the general gist of everything that we've talked about and all the conclusions we've drawn today. So as we look through our conclusions, I've basically made the same conclusion about adding things, subtracting things, multiplying things, and dividing things. So our general takeaway here is that we should recognize that our overall conclusion is that if expressions are equal, and equivalent events occur, then they will remain equal. Now, some of you should be drawing some conclusions as to the relevance of this to some of the work that we've already done or that you've seen before. Um, this is called the property of equality. Um, and when have we seen this before? When, when do we constantly talk about doing the same event to possibly two expressions? And hopefully you're thinking about this. This happens every time that we start solving equations when we do something to one side of the equation then we must do it to the other and that comes from this idea that we've just proven that if expressions are equal then equivalent events will make them remain equal and that's how we get through solving equations is we're doing equivalent things and we're expecting both sides to remain equal. So that's kind of our big key lesson from today. Um, let's move over to the uh, partner work time so I can just give you a handful of instructions before you let loose. Alright, so looking through this really quickly, uh, what we see here is we have this table where we have a hand and we're going to do the same thing to both of them. So this first step tells us that we add 4. So we see they've taken the original expression and they've added 4. So we'd want to do the same thing for this one. If we wanted to write the expression 0 plus 5 plus negative 6 plus 4. Um, then it tells us that we want to multiply by 3. Make sure that you're thinking about um, order of operations. They want to do all of this first and then multiply by 3. So we have to make sure that all of this addition happens first, even though PEMDAS would say additions would all happen last. So we're going to put that all in parentheses. 1 plus negative 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus, or my, sorry, minus 1. Multiply all of that times 3. And then divided by 2, um, we'd want to make sure that we put a division of 2 at the end. So then we're also thinking about the results. Um, and what we should hopefully see, because the whole point of this is thinking about equivalent things, so hopefully these are going to turn out equivalent. This would be negative 3 plus 2 would be negative 1 and negative 1. And so you're supposed to find the results all the way through um, to figure that out. Then coming down, um, we have an original expression. Um, find out what it's equal to. Um, and then you want to create your own equivalent expression. Um, adding any two numbers of your choosing that would be equivalent. Um, then I want you to write the new expression um, if you were to multiply it by 3, so negative 3 times 3 plus negative 5. Tell me what that's equal to. Uh, do the same thing over here with your equivalent expression. And then we're going to use the if-then statement um, to kind of fill in these blanks. So if 3 plus Sorry, this should be 3 plus negative 5. That's what it says on your paper. If 3 plus negative 5 is equal to whatever expression you chose, then negative 3 times 3 plus 5. So if we multiply one side by negative 3, multiply the other one times negative 3, 
um, we're going to see that these are still going to be equivalent. That's the whole point of this if-then statement. All right, um, go ahead and take a moment to um, pause the video. Go ahead and fill out the rest of this work and then check back in um, to double check your understanding of today's lesson before you move on to your alone time. All right, as we check into this, um, I want to just kind of quickly make you pause and think about some of the work that you did over here. And I'm wondering if you went ahead and you filled out each of these expressions and then you resolved each expression. Or did you simply just go through the results and go, oh, I know that I'm just adding four to this result, subtracting one from this result, multiplying this result by three. Um, so if you do, what we're thinking about it is a lot of times you're also, you're kind of thinking about this as this is an equation. And so as you're doing one thing to one side of the equation, you could do the same thing to the other. So this is once again, we see that skill. We have two equivalent expressions. A number all by itself is indeed an expression. Um, and we are doing the same thing um, to both expressions, they're going to remain equal. So we don't actually have to go through and individually solve each of these if we're thinking about each of these working as their own individual expression. And I imagine that's what many of you did to save yourself the time and the trouble. Looking down at this below, um, you don't need to have the exact expression over here, but something along the same lines. Um, and then once again, we see down here, this if then statement tells us if three plus negative five is equal to 2 plus negative 4, then negative 3 times 3 plus 5 is equal to negative 3 times 2 plus negative 4. Because if we do the same thing to two equivalent expressions, they will both remain equal. Um, that's kind of our big lesson for today. All right, move on over to your alone time. Make sure that you answer each part of each question, um, and then you should have some time to work on some con. All right.